Here's a piece of, of good news. The San Francisco um, School Board has suspended its uh, plan to rename a third of all the public schools in San Francisco because evidently the old names were somehow racist. The city's Board of Education voted unanimously to reverse the decision to strip 44 public schools of the names of various historical figures, including Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and the poet Robert Louis Stevenson. Apparently, a number of parents had complained, school teachers had complained, elected officials had complained, there were some legal challenges, and so they decided to revoke the decision. Now, What's particularly interesting is to watch how this decision got made in the first place, because it kind of shows you the left in operation, how they actually function. The um, San Francisco uh, School Board, the Board of Education, had created a School Names Advisory Committee in 2018. It was to, quote, engage the larger San Francisco community in a sustained discussion regarding school names. Now, in fact, uh, no such discussion ever took place. Typically, this is all rhetorical cover. Oh, democracy, we're going to consult the people, but the people are never consulted. Pretty soon, it, the committee decides for the people. And so they decide things like, let's get rid of Abraham Lincoln. And you might think, wait a minute, Abraham Lincoln? Isn't this the guy who issued the Emancipation Proclamation? Isn't this the guy who mobilized the Union Army to end slavery? Uh, four million slaves were freed as a result of what Lincoln did. Um, and so what, what could be the offense of Lincoln? Well, it turned out that under the Lincoln administration, the U.S. government was apparently harsh on the American Indians. Now, let's remember, first of all, these weren't directly Lincoln's policies. This is the policy of the Trail of Tears, of relocation of the Indians, displacement, Unjust policies to be sure, but they go back earlier to Andrew Jackson and, and Martin Van Buren. So yes, there was mistreatment of the Indians in the 19th century, but to, to put this all on Lincoln and blame him for it and ignore all the other stuff that Lincoln did, crazy. Turns out that the San Francisco School Board was also doing, quote, research, and their research by and large was driven by two things, Google and Wikipedia, Wikipedia. And so they decided, um, uh, let's look up Robert Louis Stevenson. Probably most of these people had never heard of him. And in one of his poems, which is called Foreign Children, it comes in a collection called A Child's uh, Garden of Verses, he needs to make a rhyme. So instead of doing Japanese, he uses the word Japanese. And he wants to make the rhyme work. This was his crime. He's a racist. He didn't say Japanese. He said Japanese. That's it for Robert Louis Stevenson. He's out. Paul Revere. Why is Paul Revere out? I thought he gave a useful warning. Paul Revere. The British are coming. Turns out Paul Revere was accused of being part of an expedition that stole the land of the Penobscot Indians. Except Revere was not part of that. He didn't do anything to the Indians. He was part of something called the Penobscot Expedition, which was a American military campaign against the British during the Revolutionary War. So in other words, some Yahoo, some nitwit, some room temperature IQ San Francisco Board of Education person looked this up, misread what's in Wikipedia, didn't even understand it. Probably a product of the San Francisco public schools themselves and blames Paul Revere for something he didn't do. So he was unjustly booted. He wasn't even guilty of the crime that he was accused of. Interestingly, there was a school named after Malcolm X. And as part of the discussion, someone said, we can't have Malcolm X. The guy was actually, uh, the guy was involved in drug dealing. He was a pimp. And someone else went, well, yeah, but that was only the early Malcolm X. Later, he actually became a great guy. And everyone's, like, yeah, 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 absolutely. He's fine. He, he, he grew through it. He became enlightened. Interestingly, this notion that one can atone for one's past mistakes, one can learn, one can become a better person, this kind of um, allowance is not given to anybody else, but it's given to Malcolm X. Um, Ironically, they decided that El Dorado Elementary should also be renamed. Now, El Dorado is, in fact, not a person. 
And it's not even a place. It's a mythical place. It was an imaginary land, which was, in a sense, made of gold. We're trying to find El Dorado, a sort of mythical Eden uh, laden with gold. So why get rid of El Dorado? Apparently, a San Francisco, the San Francisco Chronicle reports, one of the board members goes, uh, I don't like El Dorado. I think the concept of greed and the lust for gold, this is a concept that we don't want our children to identify with. So that's it. El Dorado School is out. I think what we're beginning to see here, as we kind of look at the sausage making of all this, is that these are people who are mindless dummies. They're full of ideological resentment. They're looking to cancel this guy, cancel that guy, but there's no balance, there's no historical knowledge, there's no sense of context, there's no proper research, they don't consult professionals in the field, they don't weigh different points of view, they do none of it. What this really means is that the public school system in San Francisco is being run by Philistines. Look up that word, by the way. You may have to Google it, San Francisco people. I doubt most of you know what it is. They're being ruled by barbarians. Maybe that's an easier one for you to comprehend. And these are the people deciding important things that reflect our public culture and our American civilization. So we're in jeopardy on this one, guys.